Hi, it's Pamela. In this tutorial, we're going to create an animated whiteboard background in Toonly and then blend it with a Doodly video for a seamless transition. Hey, and welcome to the official Doodly YouTube channel. If you enjoy our content, please click the like and subscribe button below. Now let's get straight to the video. Who says your whiteboard video background has to be plain white? I'll often use images of different whiteboards and signs as my background, and I got to thinking, well, what if we use Toonly to make a custom animated background and then blend it with a doodly video? For example, take a look at this video. This first part I made in Toonly, and then this one obviously I made in doodly. And then I edited the two clips together to make this little sequence. So we're going to do that today. First, you want to open up Toonly and create a new project. So we're going to call this one Fishing Adventure. And we're going to start building it out in Toonly. So I'm going to use that same background. And I want that fish. So that's an object that I imported earlier. Because I imported it, it is much larger than the other assets. So I'm going to zoom out and resize it. You can zoom back in now. I'm on free pick and I typed in wooden sign and I kind of like this one here this little canvas on wood I think that'll be nice so we're gonna download this this graphic and we do need to edit it so yes I am using third-party tools today so wooden sign open with I'm gonna use Pixelmator Pro you can use whatever you prefer Adobe Photoshop would be good or Illustrator or any of those tools. I'm going to remove the background so that it's transparent. And then I'm going to need to do quite a bit on this one. It's okay. Just bear with me. And then I'm going to go ahead and use my crop tool to just crop this out. And I think that's fine right there. And now I can export it. And then I need to bring it into Toonly. We go to objects, upload new object, and then we're just going to drag and drop that into place. Upload. It was named canvas sign. Here it is. And let's just resize it a bit. Do something like that. Now we have our scene, but it's a little bit of a jumbled mess. Let's take a look, right? So what we want to do is stretch out, let's make it like five seconds, stretch out our background, we're going to move our trout, and we're going to move our sign, and we'll figure out where we want them. Let's start with the sign. I want it to animate in, right? Now, by default, it bounces in, which that might be fine if you like that effect, but I want to do something a little bit different. So, first thing I want to do is click settings and turn off bounce. I'm gonna make it instant on both the in and out so it no longer bounces in. It now just, it just appears like so. And then what I'll do is I will make it move onto the scene. I think we'll have it, I had on my example, I had the whiteboard drop down. I think for this one, let's have it move up. Okay, so let me show you how you do that. Put it towards the end of the scene and position it exactly how you'd like. So where do you want it to end? Is this the size you like? Do you want it this big? Do you want it maybe a little smaller or what? I, in my example today, I want it big because we're going to do like a whole sequence in this whiteboard area. So once I'm happy with the position, I am going to move it down just a little. Then I'm going to copy and paste it, so Control c and then Control v to paste. So I have two identical images. And then I'm going to move one over so that it ends right where this one begins. And there's no blank spot in between the two of them. Okay, so they're perfect. Now this beginning one is the one that I'm going to move. So I want to click on the ending keyframe and tell it, okay, by clicking that, I'm telling it this is where you're ending, okay? And then on the beginning one, I want to click on it and I want to tell it where are you going to begin? 
So I think I want it to be small and then off camera here. Here's the middle. I'm just gonna move it down so it's off screen. So now when we hit play, it moves up and grows. Okay. We'll probably want to figure out when and where it should come into the scene. So let's hit play again. Probably right here where that's all growing into place is where we're going to want it to start. So I'm going to click, control click these together and move it over. And then we need to decide if it's happening fast enough. So let's look. And yeah, I think that's happening fast enough. Okay, I'm happy with my sign. So let's work on our trout, okay? So here he is. We can make him a little smaller because our sign is much larger than the one I was using in the example video. And we just want to have him kind of come up and then down, just kind of splash out of the water. So it's just a little subtle, small movement. So we're gonna start him here, let's say. Click on the beginning keyframe until that's where we wanna start him. And I think we probably ought to rotate him a little because trouts come up like that, right? And let's just check his settings. He bounces in, I think that'll be fine. And he's going clockwise with his rotation. So let's, we'll see what that looks like. Let's click his ending keyframe. And we want him over here now and probably pointing down like that, right? So let's see. I think he's rotating the wrong way. So let's click him and make him go counterclockwise. And see what that looks like. Yeah, it's something like that. We can make it a little bit longer. And I think that's fine. So let's just get the positioning and then we'll be done. The trout needs to be behind the sign. So we send him to the background. And he can be doing his thing as this is coming up. Let's just see. And maybe we'll just move him over a little bit. So let's hit the beginning keyframe and let's just move him over like so. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, I like that better. Let's make our sign just a little longer so it doesn't disappear. And then we can shorten our mountain landscape. Okay, so let's go ahead and export that. Save. Export. We'll make it 1080. I'm going to save it to my desktop. We're going to call it Fishing Adventure Toonly. I'm going to name it Fishing Adventure Doodly. I'm going to make it 1080 to match. Click Create. Now, I need a background and I need that background to be identical to the background we created in Toonly. So let's take a look at our video and boom, let's just pause it right there at the end. And that's going to be our background. So I need to take a screenshot of that. Okay. So that's done. We'll go to settings. Click custom down here under background style, custom image over here and browse for your file. So my screenshot is saved to the desktop and here it is. Now I want to make sure it's full size. So I'm just going to make my adjustments and that's perfect. Apply. So now you can create your video just like you would any other doodly video. Okay. So we're just going to do something real simple. Let's just add some text and 
let's add that same trout. I had already uploaded it from um, before. So I'm just going to use both of these images. So I got this fish from freepick.com and the image file that I had had two images. It had the outline and the color image. So what I thought I would do is line them up and I think that will look nice. Now I want to turn off the erase mode. So I'm in settings and I'm turning erase mode off. I want this to draw on for like one second. And then I want this one, the color one, to fade on. So I click the pencil icon and then I choose fade. Save and return. And before a fishing adventure comes on, I'm gonna give it like a second so that the hand isn't there right away for when I splice these together. So this is my video. You can continue, of course. Let's add another scene. Let's put, let's put a kid in here. I like that. And then of course you just keep continuing and continuing and continuing, just like you would any other doodly video. I am gonna change the hand to a cartoon hand. Okay, let's take a quick look and then we'll splice these together. Okay, that looks fine, so let's go ahead and export it. Okay, so it's finished, so let's head over to Camtasia. And I'm in a new untitled project, and I'm going to click Import Media. On my desktop, I have Fishing Adventure Toonly and Fishing Adventure Doodly. It's exactly what I'd like. And here they are. So we're going to start with Toonly, because that's our opening sequence, and we're just going to put it there at the beginning in the timeline. And then this doodly one, we're just going to put it right next to it in the timeline. And that is pretty much it. Let's hit play. You could see the transition. I didn't have it exactly perfect, which is okay. What I would like to do then, see, you can kind of see some white around the edges there. I'm going to make this a little larger and all my white is gone. Let's see if it lines up a little better. I could see a slight shift there. Okay, so what we wanna do is add a transition and then I'll just smooth that out a little bit. So go over to transitions and we'll just use the fade, just a simple fade right here. And you just place it right there between the two clips and it'll now kind of do a little dissolve between the two. And it'll smooth it out. And then there. Now, I did purposefully leave a little bit of time between these. So I'm going to expand my timeline a bit. We're going to trim down. Remember I had like a second before the hand comes. There's my transition. Now if I wanted, if I wanted to be perfect, I could hover my mouse here and then do this. Shrink that down a little and move it and over. That's pretty darn close. You know, that's going to be close enough, especially with the fade. So let's see. Yeah, see, that's so much better. Now, this gap. So I've got a good second or so after the fish. So right here, I could just bring this down a little there. And then we'll just drag this down. Let's see if that's a little bit better. So the fish our transition and then boom. Okay. And if I wanted, I could trim this end down just a little too on this side. So when does my hand come in? Right, right about here. So let's trim that just, just a touch and then we'll move everything back down. So let's see how that looks.
And there you have it. We have now edited our two clips together. I hope this gives you some ideas on how you can use Doodly and Toonly together. Thanks for watching.